Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we are going to be discussing when a structural element is carrying something versus when a structural element is being carried. Now, this is the basically the result of a healthy discussion I had with our new subscriber, Donald Hanye, whom I would like to thank a lot for this uh, opportunity. And it started by noticing some strange behavior in the bridge uh, deck slab when he tried to panel cut it. In case you didn't catch that, we had a bridge series that will be linked above. At least I will be linking the first video of that bridge series. So to address this issue, I'm going to basically assume me some axes. So I'll assume that the deck I'm analyzing now is 15 meters long and 5 meters wide. Now this might be some sort of theoretical video, but it helps because sometimes you're faced with this in real life and you're wondering, huh, why do I have those moments in this lab? And let's take a look on this. So, the strange thing happened when we had a beam, and I'm gonna use a simple beam, 200 by 400. This is a ridiculously small beam, but I want to hammer home a point with this beam. So, uh, well, I'm just gonna basically have me a beam at 1 meter in Y and 4 meters. So I'll apply that and close from here to here. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a ridiculously small beam, but I just want to show a point here. And you have here double pinned, and you have here double pinned. So far, so good. This is boring. Nothing new here. So I'll basically add me here a deck slab now, and I will assume me a deck slab of thickness 200 millimeters. It's going to be a shell, contour, so, well, or rectangle maybe if you want. So one, two, three, and we have our shell. So far, so good. I'm going to assume me a dead load case, and apply me just a 10 kN force just to scratch the surface. Once again, I'm saying that this is a highly theoretical video because I want to discuss some topics that might cause confusion for subscribers. Maybe it's better to have the mesh fine, so I just go to meshing, select fine, stick OK, and run the analysis again. So now the analysis is complete, and well, if you click on the deflection shape, this is what I want to talk about. Now, before the deflection shape, let's address the confusion that might have occurred. I select moment MY and you can see that those beams are perfectly simply supported as they should be because they are pinned on both ends and are receiving forces from the weight of the slabs and the loading, exactly what we're supposed to see. Okay, so fantastic. Now I don't care about the values, but let's show them anyway, just to take a look. And you see the, you see the movements that are positive exactly as they're supposed to be. Now what seems to be strange, is that if you click on results, panel cuts, and cut the, the, the deck slab here, parallel to XZ, so it's this cut here, let's cut the deck slab, this cuts the concrete now, you will see a moment in XX, and by the way this shows XX, in case you're wondering, you will see a moment in XX that is strangely reminiscent to a WL square over 8, to a simply supported beam or simply supported deck slab. Now what gives? This is where our dear subscriber Donald Khani had issues because this goes against the notion of the engineer of saying well if you have a deck slab here and you have two beams here then your general assumption and let's say that this is pinned at the both ends so you have pin supports on both ends. Now this is one of the basically ABCs of structural engineering you assume that this deck slab is being carried one way and you basically calculate the forces on the beams using the tributary area method and the beam will have a moment diagram that kind of looks like this WL square over 8 if you cut the slab like this you would as you would find a moment diagram that kind of looks like this you would have a negative moment because of cantilever beam or cantilever fa action and then you would have a dip down to the positive and then a cantilever action again and you would not expect to have the deck slab carrying any moment because you're assuming that the moment is being carried by the girders. You are basically assuming that the girders carry the slab. Now, this is true and this is our usual um, assumption, but I, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because some of us misapply this assumption. What do I mean by misapply the assumption? This is what happened here. Now, 
if you assume that something is being carried by something else, the carrier, the supporting element, should have enough stiffness to back up that claim. If you open the sections, well, the stiffness of the beam is a joke in comparison to the stiffness of the deck slab. So it itself is not enough to carry the deck slab, and it ends up to have a composite action between the deck slab and the girder where the deck slab has to carry huge parts of the load. Um, I will explain this in a moment, but before I do that, let me add another panel cut just for the sake of it. So I'll add me a new panel cut here, and basically select a panel cut that is parallel to YZ. And I'll add that, like here. I think I, didn't, I, think I misclicked, so let's click again. Now the moment seems strange, so allow me to just fix that. I want to show YY here. So, and normalize. So it seems everything is not really working well. Like even, even the cantilever moment is not, produ is not producing here. There is a reason behind that because the stiffness of the beam is small, but I will come to that later. If you want to see it, you can just go on A202, which is this panel cut, and click diagram analysis. And you don't even see the cantilever action. You can see some cantilever action trying to develop, but it's not enough, so it doesn't develop. If you go to A11, it should be zero or small values, but you can see those are significant values. So, of course, the question is, what gives? Now, the theory behind this is as follows. Well, if you have a um, large beam, this means you have a large EI or stiffness, which means that the overall deflection in the longitudinal is small. Now, a small deflection will cause a moment diagram in the beam because small deflection with large stiffness will still cause a moment diagram as it's supposed to be. However, the small deflection will cause a negligible moment diagram in the slab. Because EI of slab is much so smaller than EI of beam in a normal health relationship between a slab and the beam. However, what happened here is that our beam was extremely weak. That was, it was unable to carry the slab on its own. And <clears throat> it turns out that the slab had to help with this. Now, a good indication to see this problem is when you open the deflection shape. When you open the deflection shape, now removing this very quickly, you can see that, um, now of course the beams are not deflecting with the slab, so I'll just ignore them now. If you open the deflection shape, you can see that there is almost entirely a one-way action. And that's the reason why you have, well, the beams, uh, the, the beams and the slab both having pronounced moments in the X direction. Now what happens when you really are going to carry the slab? But what I mean by really carrying this slab is to increase the moment, the beam, stiffness by a notch. So I'll just increase it, for example, to 350 by 700. Let me just show you. And let's run the analysis again. Now the beam is bigger, so it should be able to carry partially this slab. Let's take a look at the deflection. Now the deflection, first of all, became smaller. And the side, the side uh, movement is not really pronounced enough. Allow me to explain that. So if we go to uh, results and go to diagrams for members and go to deformation and maybe increase the deformation a little bit just to show you apply you can see that there are some side movements but they're not pronounced enough now in order to see this allow me to show you the uh, panel cuts so if you go to results panel cuts and just open the panel cuts again and make sure you see them apply you can see now after increasing the stiffness of the beam, that because the slab is being at least partially carried, you can see the cantilever and positive moment action happening in the transversal direction, whereas in the longitudinal direction, we are still suffering. If you open the diagram analysis, you can see that there are still significant values. I think the value here, if you click on the point and move, yeah, the value is, I don't know, like, where's the value? 80 or 70. That's still a lot. So yes, the beam is now carrying the moment, and of course, uh, if you note, if you try this at home, if you open the moment diagram uh, and compare the moments before having a big beam and after having a big beam, you will realize that the moment in the big bigger beam is larger. Let me show you. So if you open the labels, you click, it's now 1,000. If it's now 1,000 here. Now let's go one step further and increase the beam even further. 
let's go one step further and select a larger beam let's take a look what this will produce so i'll just select a one meter beam because i mean l over 16 at least one meter so it's one meter beam now and let's run the analysis now and take a look on the moment diagram of the beam and of the slab so first things first if you go to the diagram of members and select the parameters and labels differentiated and fill if you click on that you see it's now 1200 so it's carrying even more moment that's the first thing the second the second thing i want to talk about is that you can see that the panel cut now is still seemingly simply supported and uh, you're right here but let's take a look on the diagram values if you go to diagram values and select the point you can see that instead of 96 or 69 you have now 26 you have now here in this point 26 which is like 33 percent smaller it's the case because the girders are larger and even if you check out the deflection shape now you can see that the side deflections are getting a little bit more pronounced rather than the dominated uh, longitudinal deflections this gets even better and better the larger your beams are well I'm, now the reason why i did this is because i want to dispel this notion of uh, why do you have a longitudinal uh, deflection? You have options in dealing with this. Option one is to ignore the entire moment diagram in the X and focus on the Y for reinforcement and assume that whatever happens here is going to be carried by the beam. And this is partially right because the moment is in comparison relatively smaller, like 20 kN per meter in comparison to 1200 is smaller. The only thing I want you to understand here is that if you assume that a beam is carrying a slab the beam better give you enough stiffness to back up that claim otherwise you will end up with having slabs carrying and sharing the moment with beams because the beams are not strong enough so slabs then end up carrying both uh, beams and uh, both directions and that's why my editor was screaming out loud saying deflection 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 in the last video of the bridge because if you check the deflection you would see that the deflections are large you have 37.65 millimeters now 37.65 millimeters in my opinion are large now it depends on the code of course and on the limitation but 37.65 millimeters is large so I would increase the beams which would in turn decrease the deflection and decrease the moment on the slab because the beams are carrying the moment that uh, by their own stiffness. Here's the thing. Uh, whenever you assume that something is 100% carrying something else, then uh, the carrier, the support, should have enough stiffness to back this up. Otherwise, you will end up with a composite action that uh, you need to take into consideration. Of course, uh, in normal structures, this will not be the case because beams will be vastly more stiff uh, in comparison to slabs. Especially because the L, the length of the uh, beam is rather limited in normal structures. Like this, the length is one of the major components that affect uh, the stiffness of the beam. And that's all. And uh, yeah, well, I think this covers this topic. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that it was beneficial for you. If you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, comment, subscribe. Especially subscribe because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video.